this walkthrough of adding a custom skill as a tool into another custom skill. Now this feature was available from the version 3.0.1 of the Nasus Skill Kit plugin. And what it essentially allows you to do is chain custom skills together to get some sort of response. Um, what this essentially means is, let's say in this example where we are developing a goal progress tracker, we can actually use the outputs from other custom skills and add it into our prompts to add additional context or use additional information to help get us the result that we need. A use case we'll be using today is that of a goal progress tracker where we combine both a workload summary alongside the user goals to essentially determine how well are they progressing on their goals. Now to do so, we'll be using two additional supplemental skills and adding them as tools. One of which looks at the user's workload and identifies it like cr essentially creating a summary, identifying trends within there. And another is a, we call it the goal generator, but essentially it's just extracting the list of user goals and again, summarizing them. So to look at that, we'll first see the custom skill where we're developing the summary of the user's current tasks. So this is the custom skill. You might notice that it's already being published, which is why this is grayed out. I can't edit in anything in here. And that's because it is mandatory to make sure that your prompts are both finalized and your custom skill has been published in order for it to be present in an, for use in another skill. Now to show you what this looks like, if I run this on our user, David Liu, we can see down here that based on for this particular user, these are the trends in his workload. We can also just click on the ground and prompt quickly. We actually use a flow action here where we go out and retrieve all the information about the task he currently has assigned to him and we pass it into the LLM to help generate this output. Now, this is one custom skill. So let's go in and add that by returning back to the skill, the goal progress tracker skill, clicking on the tool editor. And you should see our diagram where we can add a tool node of type skill. And we're gonna say, get workload summary. And then our resource, again, if you don't find your custom skill in here, it's because you haven't published it. You don't need to activate it with analysis admin console. That's totally fine. You just have to have it published. And you can see our custom skill here. You can click continue. And if we just briefly go back to that other skill, you'll notice that we have a skill input of a user record. So we actually need to pro provide that from the main record and I actually haven't added it in there. So I have to go back and make sure that we have a reference to that because this is what we're going to be working with. And again, we'll set our test record to be David Lou. So we want to again, return to the tool editor, type skill, network rule summary, and nice current trends. And now we should have access to a value um, to populate that in. Go continue. Now, if you think any of the outputs are going to be too long from this particular skill, you can actually have them be truncated. This is really helpful if you're dealing with an LLM that has a small token limit on it. And we're actually happy to truncate them all um, just to prevent that from happening. And until conditions, again, we can define a script here where we put down some conditions and then return false if we don't want this particular skill to run for any reason. Um, but in our scenario, we're going to have it always run and we can add our tool. So that's the first one, get workload summary and we can actually replace these curly brackets with a reference and that is the response from that skill. So these other fields um, just you might see when you're going through this insert inputs option essentially just 
if there's an error, it'll populate it within either of these fields. You can also get the provider. So this is whichever LLM performed that certain skills functionality or the status message. But most of the time you'll be wanting to work with the response from the LLM that in our case contains a the summary of his workload. So we're going to select that. And then we need to add in the list of his goals, which again, we have a custom skill here that goes out and generates goals for a particular user, which you can see here when it runs, we actually get that response back. So let's go back to our goal progress tracker and add in that skill. We can add this in as a parallel node or do it in order. Now, the outputs from one skill isn't dependent on another, so we can actually add it in as parallel. That's not a problem. We're going to say get goals. And there says it's goal generated version four. Again, we pass in that user record and we can truncate the outputs and always run it. Well, so now you can see they're going to operate in parallel. If you did have a custom skill that rely that relied on the output from another, you could kind of put them to make them um, operate sequentially and use output from one skill into the other. Um, but in the scenario, that's not what we need to do. And then again, we just go into the prompt and add the reference response from that second skill. So that's it. And if we run a test, we get our response back. So this is we can tidy up this prompt to make it a little bit easier to read, but in general, um, we get a response back that determines if there's any alignment between the current workload and their goals. And if we click on grounded prompt, we can see we actually get the output from each of those skills added in there. Now it is still in the JSON format, hence the how it says model output there, but LLMs can handle that just fine, so you don't need to worry. Additionally, you can click on tools and it's just a slightly easier way of seeing what we actually got back from each skill. So if you click on request, you see what was sent off to that skill, where you pass in both the sysid of the user and then the table name. And then we see what the response was for that get workload summary um, skill. And then as we get goals, we can do exactly the same. And again, those extra fields that I mentioned, talking about status, you can see not much need um, for these outputs, but if you can think of something, that would be awesome. So that was adding custom skills as tools to another skill. Um, I hope this was helpful. Have a good day.